Hello everyone, my name is Ija Zusan. I'm a developer and architect and work for a company called Content Cloud. And here is my um, LinkedIn and uh, Twitter handle. If you want to get in touch, please use these handles. So today, topic we are looking into it, uh, how can we access the uh, Azure resource securely using the Azure API management approach from the SharePoint online uh, via the SPFX web part. So we'll see. We'll see what's in there. So what we're trying to achieve. So the goal is basically we have a SharePoint online platform, we have SPFX for part, and we uh, we wanted to get the data from the Microsoft Azure Store table. Now, yeah, what are the options we have? One option, uh, so that's the main goal. So we want to get the data from Azure Store table. And by the way, this could be any Azure resource you are communicating, so it depends on what you're trying to do. So now, it, what are the options we have? One option is we can use the usual secured a your function way or a your web app way so where you making a request calling a your function and a your function is basically going and get a, a your table data for you and sending you back uh, then which you normally we implement that one and another approach today which today we are looking into it how can we make use of a your api management uh, way which basically technically you are directly dealing with your endpoint a api endpoints so you don't have to go via your function and your web app. And if you're in the green, you can see uh, for each approach, there are some benefits and there are some drawbacks. So for the your function one, if you look first, you see this quite simple to set up and cost effective and suitable for smaller API deployments. But whereas, um, but it has the limited API management capability, require more manual configuration for security and governance. But on the other hand, we have um, a your API management. It's quite comprehensive API management capabilities, uh, suitable for large API deployments, and it's got all of the box robust security and governance features. So, what are the drawbacks? Uh, it's more complex to set up compared to what a secured your function. Uh, it can be more expensive for smaller projects. So it depends on uh, your type of project you're working on. You can choose the option uh, which can works for you. So. Uh, if we look into today's solution architecture, uh, what we have built, so what we built is we've got SPFX web part, uh, and what we and we have got the Azure Public API endpoint, uh, which we got from the Azure API management uh, after all the configurations. So what we're doing is we calling that API our public API endpoint, uh, and then call, uh, via the SPFX web part, but before we call that, we also had some uh, authentication to do, like we are, SPFX web part is getting authenticated to Azure API management uh, via the Azure Authenticate with Azure AD token. Uh, so we'll be registering a app first in Azure AD, and then we use that app to get the token, and we pass that token part of the request when we call this Azure Public API uh, endpoint. Once we get to the Azure API management, and we have you know some other um, validation checkpoints like we have a codes, uh, we have a valid audience, we have a make sure the client ID, uh, the request will come from, make sure it's the same as we are expecting, uh, tenant IDs, uh, what we're expecting. So everything is handled in 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 policies in the Azure API management, and then the Azure management then is got authenticated via the managed identity to Azure Story Table. And this is where we get the data, so Azure API management, get the data for you and then send you back to the SPFX web part. So that's the whole solution architecture. So before we uh, uh, go into more detail, let's jump on the demo first. So the, if I go in here and we say, let me reload. So I'm going to click on view uh, your table data. So you see that it's already logged, uh, authenticated. And so if you click on this one, it's going to go and connect to your API management and bring our data from the your table. Here we go. So we've got this data, and uh, it's, it's basically this just a sample records available in your table storage. And that's what I'm calling. Now, how do we get from here to, to get the data without? any, um, how do we set up the Azure API management, etc. So before uh, we go to uh, setup, so let me give you the code first. So what's the code? 
Um, so let me show you the code first. So here is the solution. So first of all, I have a three uh, property pane fields. One is a subscription key, which we we can get from the uh, API API management portal in Azure. Then scope URL. I mean, you don't have to have a separate um, property pane field here, but it's good for the configuration. You can use in the web part directly. And then this is the table endpoint. This is the API endpoint for the Azure table. Um, uh, storage so once we go all these things then we can go to the actual Azure solution so we are basically on load we are calling this guy call Azure resources we're getting the access token first and the access token is same usual way we're using the add um, AD token provider and passing the scope URL uh, and once we go the token we uh, uh, once we go the token then we're passing this uh, token to the get a your table data we're passing this token to this function and then it's using the token as well as the subscription key and then calling our table endpoint and then this is where we get the data now to get this uh, first of all we need to go to a your uh, you need to go to a your ad register an app which is uh, i have done 0365-sp apmi and then you make sure you have a um, you know create your expose add a scope which is the um, so you click on it, it's like a user underscore impression it. So once you have done this, there's no need to add any permissions whatsoever. This is just for authentication, no secret. What's you can leave everything uh, uh, by default. So then you go to your app uh, web part, go to your config solution. You can see you have a user underscore um, uh, impression, impression, impressions and then the name of your your AD app under the web API permissions when you deploy this uh, one make sure you um, grant the permission to this one and what we will do that it will help us to generate a token which we can pass as a part of the request to the Azure API management so once we got the token uh, I can show you the quick token as well so this is the token which we got from the and you can see the audience is my client ID and my tenant and then I have a uh, the app ID, which is the um, uh, SPFX out of the default uh, uh, app registration uh, ID, which is help us to get the token. So we have the audience there, we have the app ID there, and then we can go and pass this token to uh, the Azure API uh, management. Um, now let's go to the Azure API management resource. First of all, we go in here, we just go to system, we go in there, manage identities, we enable the um, manage identity for that because we need that to get authenticated with Azure Story Table. We, I have created a new product. You can create a any product here. So I've created Office 365 portal. Uh, and then within the product, you can create multiple API. So in my case, I've added Azure Table Storage API and then added an operation call. I wanted to get the entities from the table. You can see my front end, my get URL is same because there's no other API endpoint available uh, in, in that when we call the Azure Story Table endpoint REST API. And then this is important inbound processing. So what it is basically, you can add cores. You can add. Um, so this is very important. So inbound processing, you can see you can this. You can define the cores to so make sure where you wanted to get the request. The request should come from the valid uh, audience. And then you have a validate a your AD token. You can define validation uh, for your a your AD token. So whatever the validation you have in there, if that has passed, then it goes to the next step. And then you go and call your, um, the backend service. So let me show you the, what it looks like in, in actually uh, without exposing my tenant details. So you can see here under the calls, you have a uh, define the origin. So make sure it's coming from your tenant. So if you send a request somewhere else, it, it won't allow you to process. Then you have another AUAD token validation. So this is a, policy which you can define this is the tenant id i'm expecting and then uh, this is the two application id which will be part of that request one for the shipper online client extensibility web application principle the default one for spfx the second one which we created uh, the client id for that so you need to specify here and then part of that token i'm also wanted to check the audience is exactly the same as i have here defined so now you have these two 
you know, um, checkpoint here. So if the request comes from a valid audience, valid region, then it will go to the next step. This is where you can basically intercept the request, what is coming, if everything validation has been passed. Then here I'm calling just basically at the endpoint, you can construct the API URL where you want to set the backend service uh, uh, from the here. And then once you've done this, the next step is basically how do you authenticate your API management with the Azure storage. That's where you add this line called authenticate manage entity resource equal to this. And then before you do that, make sure you go to the Azure storage and go to the access control and add this as a role assignment for your API management resource as a storage table data reader in my case, but depend on what do you want to give this role. So when the Azure API management try to um, try to uh, connect to um, to the Azure story table, it basically, uh, it has the permission to do that. Now, once you've done that, you simply go, uh, this get automatically calculated based on what you have done in set backend service. So you don't have to add it by yourself. Uh, so you can see it's dynamically been updated. And then once that done, uh, it, will, it will send the data back uh, to your SPFX web part. Uh, so you come back and so there you go. So you go, go back. And then this will send you the data back and then, you know, here we go. So, I mean, this is a basic introduction of how you can use of your API management. But yeah, this is this is a huge area that is, can be quite useful if you are uh, dealing with less posts where you wanted to uh, keep your backend unexposed to the client apps and uh, might be your secured application or something. Uh, so the user doesn't know and they don't have to know uh, you know, where, where, what kind of backend service is being used, what kind of credential is being used, etc. Or you have to set up everything in, in the, your API management. And um, again, it depends on uh, your types of applications you're building. So, um, yeah, that's all from me. Uh, let me know if you have any question. Thank you. So one last thing before I say, uh, I forgot. So please go on my blog. I've wrote the blog post uh, and I, I listed it step by step implementation step one step two uh, what you need to do so please go through that if you're interested uh, to, to replicate what I've shown you today All right thank you